Hi and welcome back. In the last video we went ahead and on the contact.html page in our project we set up this simple message form and you can see that here. In this video we want to move on and continue to enhance this form by adding some validation to it. And the validation that we want to add to this form is basically going to be that we want to be able to require that they enter in certain values. And you can see if I bring up the actual form here, and we saw this in the last uh, video, I'm going to go ahead and refresh that page. You can see currently I have name, email, and comment as required fields. And if I don't enter a value in there, when the user submits the form, they're going to get this error message that the certain field, in this case name, is a required field. If we were to enter a value in there, such as John, you can see the error disappears for that field, but it's going to remain for email and comment. So let's go ahead and see how we set up that validation. Now, in order to do this, you're going to need to get some sort of a validation script. And the one that I like to use is inside of my framework, but there are literally hundreds of jQuery validation scripts that you can um, use. And you can just simply go to Google and Google um, jQuery validation script or jQuery form validation, and you'll see lots of different options come up. And again, the one that we're using is inside of my framework that you can download on my website. So I've got my contact page open here again. And I'm going to come here to Files, and I'm going to go into my Framework folder. And inside of my Framework folder, I'm going to go into the JavaScript folder, and I'm going to go to Plugins. And you're going to see the folder name Validation right here. And that's going to contain everything that we need for um, the validation script. And just like the other scripts that we've added, we always start off by making sure jQuery has been inserted into our page. And if I look at the code from my page, actually the source code, not the CSS, but the source code from my page, and I go all the way up here to the top, you can see jQuery has already been added to this page because it was included in the template. So I've got that set up, and now all I need to do is copy over validate.js and validate.css. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the first one here, and then I'm going to hold down the control key with my left hand and click on validate.js. If you're on a Mac, you're going to hold down the command key to select both of those files. And then I'm going to go ahead and right click on them, and I'm going to use the edit copy option. Again, we've done this several times in preceding videos. And now I'm going to come back into my project folder. I'm going to right click on my JavaScript, my JS folder. I'm going to do edit and paste. And that should paste the validate CSS and the validate JS into that folder. And again, just like before, the validate.css shouldn't be in the JavaScript folder. It should be in our CSS folder. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag that up into CSS. I'm going to say update. And so now they're both in the proper place. Now, if we come back in here to my framework, you're going to see in the validation folder, just like before, there's form validator instructions. I'm going to go ahead and open that on up here. And you can see the first step was making sure that jQuery was added to the page. And the second thing that we need to go ahead and do is we need to add the actual scripts for our validating. So we're going to go ahead and copy this block of text. So I'm going to right click on that and copy. We're then going to come over here to the contact page. And I can't paste it up here because this is controlled by the template. But anything below the title line, I can. Or anything around the title line, I can. Because you can see this is in one of those editable regions. So I'm going to go ahead and click at the end of title and hit enter. So I'm on a blank line, and then I'm going to go ahead and paste those scripts in there. There we go. So I've now added the scripts to my page. Now, again, because we added jQuery up here 
We already have it included. We don't actually need this line, so we should delete that. Don't include jQuery in there twice. You're also going to see that there's a link here to the style sheet. If you place the style sheet, the validate.css, in a folder other than CSS, you're going to go ahead and need to change the path here. Then you're going to see again another JavaScript here, and you can see this is linking to the validate.js right here. And again, it's going to be looking for that in the JavaScript folder. So if you put it somewhere other than a folder called JS, you're going to need to um, put the correct path in here. But again, as long as you pasted everything as we did it before, whoops, everything as we did it before with your validate.css in your CSS folder and your validate.js in your JavaScript folder, you're going to be fine. And I'm going to come back in here to my framework and actually I'm sorry I'm going to come back in here to the page and that's all you're going to need to do to activate the um, validation script now the next thing that you have to do I'm back here in my instructions that I opened up step two is going to be to put a specific class on the form tag now the form tag normally is going to have two required attributes the action attribute and the method attribute and if we go ahead here and look in our page and scroll down to our form you can see we already have the action attribute and we already have the method attribute now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add the class attribute right here called required form so class equals required form and what that's going to do is it's going to mark this is a form that the validation script should work on so I'm going to go ahead and copy that just this part right here and I'm going to go ahead and paste it and you can paste it anywhere at all I'm going to paste it right at the beginning there but you just need to have that class attribute added to your form tag I'm going to go ahead and save that and come back into my item here or my instructions here the next thing that we need to do this was the first thing we needed to add the second thing we need to add is we need to add the error code after the label tag so I'm going to go ahead and again highlight this text right here and what this is going to do is it's going to place an asterisk on any required fields so I'm going to highlight that and copy it and again it's right after the opening label tag I'm going to come back into my contact form and let's go ahead and say that the uh, name field the name field is going to be required now the list items here are purely for formatting that's the only function they serve they don't change the form in any way the two lines inside of the list item are the actual form or the actual form elements themselves and you can see there's two of them here there's a label and then there's an input tag this is the actual field and this is the label for the field and we look at this in design view you can see again there's the label and there's the field itself so what we need to do is here's the opening label tag here and there's the closing label tag what we need to do is click right here and we need to paste in this code right here whoops this EM code right here and then I want to go ahead and put a space after EM there in between the closing EM tag and the word name I also want to require that they enter in an email so again I'm going to click right there in between the end of the opening label tag and the actual label and I'm going to paste that in there right there and type a space just to give myself a little extra space to the left of that for the asterisk and then finally I want to go ahead and do that on the message as well so again I'm going to go ahead and click after the opening label tag but before the actual label 
and I'm going to go ahead and paste that in and put a space. Then let's go ahead and save that and come back into our instructions. So we put the error code in there. The third thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and put a required class on the input tag. And you can see here we have a number of attributes. We've got the type attribute, the name attribute, the ID attribute, and then we have the required class attribute right here. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on that and copy it. Come back into my contact form. And again, I'm going to scroll up and here's the name. I'm going to go ahead and paste that as the last item. The order doesn't matter. I'm going to do the exact same thing here. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and do that on the message item. Just like that save all that and now let's go ahead and take a look and see how our form is working I'm gonna right click here and say save all and then I'm gonna go ahead and go into design view and you can see that asterisk is now appearing with a space in between the asterisk and the name that's the reason why I typed that space in there indicating that that's a required field I can now go ahead and I can go through my form but if I click send message, if there's not a value in those fields, you're going to see that I get an error code right here. Once I go ahead and fill out my form though, and I'm just going to go ahead and put one in there. If I hit send, you'll see the error disappears and I would need to fill out these other two required fields in order for them to uh, um, in order for this form to actually send. So we've gone ahead and we've successfully added the um, entry validation to the form. Now the last thing you need to do is actually add the form processing script to your form. Now again, there are lots of form processing scripts out there that you can use. Um, I include one in my framework. You can also go to Google and simply type in um, something like form to email or form processing script or form to email processing script and you'll find a whole bunch of form uh, processing scripts that you can um, that you can use in your projects now another alternative to that is using the form processing script that your host provides and again, lots of hosts like GoDaddy and others will provide you with a script that will convert your form entries into an email and send them to you. Now, here's what you need to, to know. Some hosts, some web hosts, will let you use your own forms or they will let you use their form. Some that don't provide a, a processing script for you um, should have your hosting account opened up to use whatever kind of script you want. But oftentimes your web host will disable form processing scripts that aren't their own in order to cut down on spam. So if this form processing script doesn't work for you, the first thing you need to do is contact your web host and ask them if they need to open something up to allow you to create a form and have it sent to you over email or if they need you to use one of their scripts or something else. In any case, here's the uh, script that I use. If I come in here to Files and I come in here to uh, my framework, we're not going to be in our JavaScript folder, we're going to be in our PHP folder right here. Now, there are generally two different types of servers that you can be working on. You can be working on a Linux server or you can be working on a Windows server. Linux servers are the most common kinds of web servers that are out there. If you have a choice between a Windows server and a Linux server, choose the Linux server unless, unless you have a specific reason to choose the Windows server. The Windows server will require an ASP form processor, not a PHP form processor. So again, and again, 
if you don't know what kind of server you're on, you're probably on a PHP server. You can always contact your web host in order to confirm that. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on this mailform.php and I'm going to go to edit and copy. So I'm sorry about that, my cell phone went off and I had to pause the uh, recording. So I'm going to come here to files and I'm going to right click on form, mailform.php in my framework and I'm going to go to edit and copy. So we've copied that script. We're now going to go ahead and go into our project folder and you should have a folder here called PHP. If not, you're going to want to right click up the top and say new folder and name it PHP. I'm just going to go ahead and right click there, edit, paste that on in there. I already did this so um, it's bringing up do you want to replace. I'm going to click yes to all there and I now have mailform.php. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to come back into my contact page I'm going to come into code view and I'm going to scroll up and you're going to see the action attribute on the opening form tag and you're going to see it says enter processing script. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that whole phrase there including the quotation marks. I'm then going to go ahead and type a quotation mark that brings up my browse option. I can press enter and I can go into, you see I'm in my project folder right here, I can go into my PHP folder and select my mail form. I'll click OK there and you should now see that it says PHP slash mail form. And now I'm going to go ahead and save that. OK, and actually I'm going to close these instructions because we don't need those anymore either. So now everything's done in this form in order to make it complete and allow you to send a message over email. But there's one extra step you need to do and that's actually configuring this mailform.php code. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to come back in here to files and I'm going to open up this script. And you're going to go ahead and see there are some options right here and you need to fill out each one of these. Now the your email this is where you're going to put your email right here and it needs to be inside of quotation marks. So if your email is um, you know john.smith at gmail.com you would enter john.smith at gmail.com. Your website which is what I'm going to go ahead and do here john.smith at gmail.com and then under your website, I was just thinking how unfortunate the guy who's named John Smith is that has the email account at their email account at Gmail. They must get all sorts of junk email. Then the second option you need to set is the your website link right here. So I'm going to go ahead here and highlight that and you're going to type in whatever your website is. So I'm going to go ahead and do HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.shearsdesign.com The third option is the thank you page and this is going to be the page that you go to after you successfully submit the form. So after my, th my thank you page is whatever form or whatever page you want the user to go to after they click send here. And in my case I don't have one set up right now but I can just go ahead and type in here thank you dot html and I'm going to go ahead and create that in a moment. Max points has to do with how many bad submits a user can make or submit attempts a user can make um, before the server or the script is going to refuse to submit and it will actually time you out for 15 minutes and again this will cut down on the spam that you receive it won't affect your actual users just affects the uh, spam you receive. So you put in your email, your website and your thank you page. Now that thank you page, I'm going to go ahead and close that out here and close this out here, 
has not been created yet. So what I can do is I can right click right here and say new file. And then I'm just going to go ahead and type thank you. So this is going to be the page that that script sends people to after they successfully submit the form. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that right there. Open that on up. Then I'm going to go to modify select the template option and apply template to page. I'm going to go ahead and select Shears Main as my template and then click select and now I have a page and I can come up here and type thank you for your message you know this could be whatever thank type of thank you message you want to include in there uh, maybe I delete these images here you know block of text you know whatever you want to go on this thank you page and I close that out and I'm gonna go ahead and open up my contact page again and we'll go into live view here and that's all you need to set up a form inside of um, a page inside of Dreamweaver now again several things to remember here one is we didn't go into detail about all of the HTML and the CSS that went into CSS is down here that went into setting up the look and feel of this form but if you want to get more into creating forms inside of Dreamweaver go ahead and watch my HTML forms video second thing I want you to remember about forms this insert form option here you can use that as a time saver but only do it after you understand the actual HTML code that it's creating because if you don't understand the HTML code that's being created you won't actually be able to make this form work all this is is a way of speeding up creating forms for you so don't don't fall into the trap of um, of being dependent upon this always learn what this code means and again in the HTML forms class um, we can go through that uh, or the HTML form series we can go through that and the third thing I want you to remember is if the script doesn't work the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to contact your web host and you're going to want to find out a do they allow you to use your own scripts to process forms or do they have their own script that they make you use if they have their own script that they make you use they should be able to provide you some sort of documentation as to how to download that script or how to include it as the action for your form and again the action attribute is the script that runs when the user clicks submit and they'll also be able to tell you if they allow you to use your own processing scripts if they need to open it up or if you need to change some sort of setting to enable that so again that's all there is to setting up a simple form on an HTML page in the next video what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about SEO and how to set up the search engine optimization on your page